Yeah, um, just like some videos I've seen in life. Sort of the impression, you know, when you paint things in a, not so much as that. So generally, Christians paint things in a sort of uh, bad light, you know, when it comes to Islam. Yeah. Certain, certain topics uh, which are focused upon. Yeah, um, I would suggest that Islam paints itself in a bad light from the Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, when I, the way I see it, like when I, I'm some Muslim. Yeah, there are some things which, you know, I my question as well. Yeah. But on the whole, I don't see it as an evil thing. Do you like, think that fighting people until they feel themselves humiliated and pay you protection money is on the whole a good thing or on the whole a bad thing? Fighting people, what's that reference? Jizya. Um, if the assumptions are true, the assumption is that I am Nejas. No, I'm giving you some assumptions. No, no, I mean, if the assumption is true that Paul exists, he sends a message to people, yes. guide them with correct their ways of life. Yep. And revelation comes from on high. Uh, whatever that board decrees, yeah. Has to be considered good. Have you heard of false prophets? Yeah. Okay, so Islam claims there are 124,000 prophets. The, the Bible, yeah, for each people, and the Bible has maybe a hundred or so. So I would ask, where is the Muslim prophet to China, to Japan, to Russia? To, where, where are those books that have been recorded of the holy sayings of those as, prophets as, as, from Allah? As far as I know. These prophets that we're talking about, when you say 124,000. They can't be yet to come because no, Muhammad not, is the last. They're not major prophets. Like, for example, a prophet could be someone who guides just two people in his house. Not oh, no, no, no. It says to all nations. It doesn't say to your living room. No, if you look at the history of the prophets, the family, like some prophets were only sent specifically. Like to say, a certain people? No, no, not people. Like, it could be even as short as a, as a house. Okay, so would house. the household then proclaim that word onward? Or does Allah want that kept just in the family? Do you suppose? We're not told. You don't know. Okay, so, so my the point major is... The major revelations that I mentioned are not those ones. Yeah, the 100... Um, like yeah, the 124,000 prophets though, as Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, it wouldn't matter whether they were minor or major prophets, there are none after Muhammad according to Islam, whereas Christianity teaches clearly in Luke 16 that the final prophet is is John, is Yoha, is Yahya. It says there is him and then the kingdom and then he proclaims Christ, which is a fulfillment of that that which is written in Luke, it, there Christ comes and he brings with him the kingdom because he is the king. Do you see? So after John, we're told in Revelation to watch for false prophets, false Christs, and uh, false gospels. So anyone who comes with new alleged good news or who comes in the name of, of God cannot be a prophet after John. So that's that's why Jesus is not a prophet. Jesus is the Word made flesh. He is. God's own word become human. He lessened himself. If Jesus is not a prophet, no, he hasn't prophesied. He has prophesied, but he is not a prophet. He prophet. is God. So, prophet. all right. So, my counter argument before I, I'm, I know I'm interrupting, but when God reveals to a prophet, God is not a prophet, but they're God's words coming through the prophet. But Christ is the originator of God's words. Okay, so we'll go by the terminology of last. Okay, but last means last. But we digress. Yeah. So yes. So so do, say, is it good or bad? If God is resting, we're making some points to go with. Like a thought experiment. Let's say that the God revealed to Muhammad and Muhammad was a messenger. Now, on that assumption, if people reject God's communication and it becomes apparent now, like a rock when you say the Christians yeah, yeah. 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 You may need to speak up a little bit. Uh, 
Okay. I asked him. Yeah. So, so what I would say to that is on those assumptions, um, I would suggest that a true prophet and the best example to mankind would be able to hear clearly God's communication without Jibreel. That's my first point. My second, no, 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 that's no that's my, that is my first point. I'm talking about Jesus. So yeah, if, and, if, and you're saying that if, it's, if the communication is clearly from God and the people disagree, then they can take that with God. If my, like, I'm, following I'm, I'm him. No. Um, the Christians we're talking about here with the, the Nusara, the God of the Nusara, they're not like so, you. So that's right. Yeah, it's a different Christian. It's though. unimportant. That if they follow Isa, that's a different matter. You stop talking then? No. So the Jizya yeah. was for these people, not for you. Right. And so when was it abrogated? Yeah. I'm asking you for evidence because no, I haven't heard it before. You keep saying this, it's part of the yeah. So the Nusara of the time, yeah. we believe differently than you believe. For yeah. example, they held Jesus as equal to Allah. That was equal? Yes, yeah. yeah, so do I. Yeah. That's not different. No, you don't. Yes, I you do. Hold the to I'm talking about God. <laughs> Why would a Christian... Hey, you're going to jump in. Is Allah God? No. Then why did you say we hold the same Because you're talking about a the Christian Nasara, sect. The Nasara is the music of Allah. Yeah. Is that Allah. their language? Do you know much about the Nasara of the Is that their language? Are they speaking in Arabic? If you answer my question, then we'll ascertain if I know anything. Do you know much about the Nasara? Is this going to answer my question? Do you personally believe jizya to be a good thing or a bad thing? Okay. So, the Nasara were not Christians of the and they decided that they were not going to accept any communication from God to Muhammad. Yeah, said, oh. which any Christian would. And they decided, based on the assumption, and this is going to be something, that Muhammad was giving the truth. Then, God has said to him now, that he tell these people, like you said, you can do that. Uh, I assume military, and then tell them to pay the Jizya. That would say part of them. But that is an action. That's two actions that are ongoing. Well, it's warfare. It is warfare, and the time of warfare. Of right. Crime. So, do you believe that to be a good or a bad thing? You haven't answered me. For today. Yes, because no, you as you say, if the Nasar are not the Christians of today. Neither are the Muslims of Iran or Saudi Arabia the Muslims of the seventh century. So my point, my point is this: as Christians, I don't know much about the Nasar, but if they believe Jesus to be their redeemer, and they have a copy of the New Testament, and they see that Luke says that John is the last prophet, and then another supposed prophet or false prophet, as he must be if you go by the Bible, comes along and gives a different. Completely different readings. God has not got Alzheimer's. God does not say you cannot divorce bar for uh, sexual immorality and then go on to write to lack. It, 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 it's not feasible for somebody who's like scripturally versed Christianity wise to then ex or, or even Judaism to then accept that God changes his name, uh, tells everybody that he deceived the world six or seven hundred years ago. He created Christianity, Allah, in his own mind because he put a, a, a doppelganger on the cross. Like so I don't and so so regardless, I can stand firm and say that Jizya or any subduing of any people for an ideological viewpoint, whether or not God is right or wrong in respect of Allah making that decree, I can say it's morally wrong. That and is, therefore, can I say I've got better morals than Allah? That is a bit unfair. In what way? He said about the crucifixion. Yeah. If, um, he did do that. If some gang wants to kill someone, yeah. and I, like you put it, get a proper gang and put it in the place of that guy. Yeah. Why is that an evil act? I'm saying I'll, I'll let you know why. Yeah. Because if the blood of Christ does not wash away my sins, if the prophecies of the crucifixion and resurrection are not so, if Allah revealed the Torah, the Psalms and the Injil and they were lies, and yet he is God, I don't want to believe in that God. I don't want to believe a God that lets the whole of mankind labour under an illusion for 600 or so years and then comes along and says they may plot but I am the best of plotters. Apparently, that's many things happen. 
people are it's raped, killed. Yes, they are. Tortured. What has that got to no, do with? No, that argument makes no sense. No, I want Which to argument? What you just said. You are implied. If God comes along and says, I'm, I'm still. Way, well, well, no, but I don't think you understood my argument okay. then, because it's not unfair. Okay, okay. If God now tells I me he lied, I, I don't want to worship that God. Yeah. If God puts doppelgangers on. Yeah. Whose life are we saving? You're, you're the one that God said to be a sacrifice, prophesied from from Deuteronomy. You're linking that. But you're talking as Hold if on. it's a man on the street. No, I'm linking it to a lie. No conspiracy, it's a lie. No, Allah links it to that, not me. But Allah says it. You can't have to go as far as that. Today, people do many things. They yeah, what's that got to do with God's morality? And they get that confused people. Yes, what has that to do with God's morality? I said to a simple thing. I'm listening. To save the prophet. Yeah. God done that. Yeah. Are you saying his intent behind doing that was that to mislead the I'm saying God would not do that, and these are the reasons. We are that it, these are the reasons. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, Jesus tells me. I lay down my life and I can take it up. In the New Testament also, we are told that he was raised by the Spirit. In the New Testament also, we are told that he was raised by the Father. In that respect, there's the Godhead right there. That God who does not lie, this, these are the salient points, he does not lie, he will therefore not give any new gospel or revelation, because he tells us in Revelation, this is the final, this is your last lot, here you go, this is from Jesus Christ himself, from the Father, through John. It, that talks about the end times, false prophets, false gospels. And anyone who comes along after, Yai, after John, other than Christ, with any revelation, and also to, to a deception, a lie, it's not a conspiracy. Allah says, I deceived them. For a surety, they slew him not. Like, so it's it's not my God. To deceive someone for the greater good is acceptable. Sorry? To deceive someone for the greater good is an acceptable thing. No, God's, God's morality is absolute. We're not machines. We're not here to tell you. But we are not God time. either. Yeah. Some truths cause more harm than good. No, but this is God we're talking about. We're talking about God. I don't think you're quite getting that. No. So I said it again. Yep. I asked you again. Yep. That if some gangsters yeah. decide to kill a man, yeah. let's, let's, I know you find it offensive that it's Jesus, but let's leave that aside. Let's say we're talking hypothetically about someone else. Some gangsters want to kill someone. Yeah? Yep. I make a scheme. And the only way they're going to leave him is if they think he's dead. So I make a scheme to convince those gangsters that this guy is dead. Now this is my deception to death. So the gangsters, they come, they think they've killed him. Now they will leave him alone because he's dead. As far yep. as they're concerned. Okay, I've got an answer for this. Now, this is my deception to death. Yep. It is, in a way, the less of the evil. No. Yeah. Not really, no. Yeah. Because I have saved this man. This yeah. is my purpose. By deception. And we're told that Satan is the father I of all lies. By deception, I have saved yep. his life. Yeah, but his life was his to give away no, and no, his no, no, to no, take no, back no. again. The hypothetical is not Hypothetically, I'm, talk, I'm going to remain with Jesus because he no, is the truth. Hypothetically. You can hypothetical all you want. I'm talking about Allah yeah, and Christ. Hypothetically. Yep. It's not by Jesus. So I've saved the gangster. Yeah. Yeah. Now, somebody makes a religion based upon my deception. Let's say, right. Yeah. Even though it already existed for 600 years prior. But yeah. Somebody makes a religion based on my deception. Yeah. yeah. You're holding me your country. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm not listening. Uh, do you know what? I drifted off. I'm not joking. Like, Allah lied. He said he lied. In the Bible, Satan is the father of all lies. I'm also told that the final prophet is John. I'm told to beware of false Christ. Isa gives false miracles and he's made a liar by Allah who calls him pure in Surah 19. He says, he says, blessed is the day I am born. Blessed is the day I die. Blessed is the day I am raised to life again. So there's the resurrection and the crucifixion. Everything is right in that statement. But Allah now, at the behest, I would suggest, of Muhammad, who was quite changeable and abrogated things and went backwards and forwards, to now try to 
eradicate the religion of his uh, uncle-in-law of um, various Christians and Jews who were in, well, Messianic Jews who he came across. I believe that when he was weak, he said to you, your religion and to me, mine. When he was more powerful, he said, humiliate them until they feel themselves to Jude and pay the jizya. Hold on, fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day. Um, it, it is prescribed to you for fight, to fight, even though you may not know what's best for you, I, Allah, know what's best for you, and you will fight until the end, until there is no other religion but Islam. And I, for one, disagree with that wholeheartedly. It's not conspiratorial. I don't know if you think that sort of buzzword like gives you an argument. Do you think jizya is right or wrong, morally? You have an answer for me, you just giving a money. Now, if you don't meet me, if you don't answer the question, yeah, which I was too. I haven't and got to a yes or no yet. So I was telling you, if the victim is from God and if the prophet is from God and the people reject. But I reject those those premises. I don't believe that. So why would it be fair for you to charge me a jizya when I don't believe in the God that you say revealed this verse? Do you get a choice here who you pay tax to? Um, yes, you do. It depends how much you earn. It depends what job you, you have. Yes, you do. Okay. That's the answer. The question, okay. Yep. Do you get a choice? Or you pay Could the you taxes? stop coming away from your religion and stick with your own religion? Don't give me the example of a government. There's, there's no yes, you. Yes, you can choose but what tax. Firstly, GCIA is no tax. GCIA is protection money. GCIA is protection money. That's what the mafia yeah, in Italy stuff like that yeah? makes law. That's, look that's the model they use. Stuff like that. Okay, so as I know that I'm not too good at remaining quiet when people are waffling, but as we can see, he couldn't answer whether Jizya was good or bad. I'm going for bad. Um, protection money, bullying, gangsterism, none of them are pros like prescribed in uh, scripture. We're told to love our enemies and our friends as ourselves. Pray for those who curse you and um, bless those who despitefully use you. I may have just butchered that, but that's the gist of it. Because God is love. And within this new year, I, I hope that Speaker's Corner comes together to oppose those scriptures that um, go against mankind, that go against our fellow man. And if people keep bringing, bringing it back to the examples of society and what if it was a random bloke on the street, it wasn't. It was my God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for me and for you, even if you don't know it yet. So I pray that the Holy Spirit would touch your heart and the word of God would not fall onto deaf ears. And um, God bless you all. Thank you.